Welcome to Algebra 1 Journal 3.4, graphing standard form, I believe this is. Yes, equations in standard form, also horizontal and vertical lines. Starts on page 76 in your journal. Let's rumble here. This one's going to be a quick one, I think. Uh, vocab up here. Uh, standard form. This form graphs really easy with x and y intercepts. So this is our standard form right there. ax plus by equals c. a, b, and c are integers. In other words, we never have those as fractions. We never have those as decimals in this format. This form, I should say. The x-intercept, if you remember our song from the other day, is on the x-axis. You find it by setting y equal to 0. That was that one. The y-intercept is on the y-axis. You find it by setting x equal to 0. So notice for the x-intercept, it's the y. For the y-intercept, it's the x equals 0. So it's the opposite letter you're making equal to 0. And we go with that. This is on page 130 in your book. You can find these. Some core concepts. Remember, the book has better, more colorful pictures of these in there. They often have other examples, and it contains a lot more information than is just on the journals. So horizontal and vertical lines. So we're looking at a horizontal one here. That's not got an equation y equals b. Notice that goes through the y-axis. So it's not parallel to it. y equals b goes through the y-axis. It's horizontal. The x equals a, a and, a and b in these two cases, for the can be any number, goes through the x-axis. Notice the points it's going through on here. Uh, a, we call, that's what we call the x-intercept. That's what we call the y-intercept right there. That b, you can write it as a point. So remember that y equals, it's not parallel to the y-axis, it goes through the y-axis. x equals not parallel to the x, it goes through it. Is y equal horizontal or vertical? Well, think about that one. You can go up here and look at it. y equals b, that's an example of my horizontal. x equals negative 3 over 7 thirteenths. So don't let the numbers scare you. You don't even need to see this. This doesn't even come into play here. If it's x equals, actually remember that goes through the x-axis. That's going to go vertical. Okay. What does the line x equals 0 look like? Well, x equals 0, that's going to be a vertical line through the origin, which means it's going to look like the y, whoops, I misspelled that, axis. So that's what x equals 0. Well, if x equals 0 looks like the y-axis, the next thought, what's going to look like the x-axis? Think about it. Write it down. Okay. Using intercepts to graph. So here, the x-intercept is the graph of the graph is the x-coordinate. So we're calling that, it's not written very well there, that's the a and a0. Okay, so you can write that either way. You can just write the a. You can write it a0. You do need to call it the x-intercept. When you do that, it's the point where the graph crosses the x-intercept. It crosses the x-intercept at the x-axis. It's on the x-axis. It occurs when y equals 0. All that stuff is kind of duplicated. Those ideas should be sounding more familiar to you. The y-intercept of the graph is the y-coordinate. That's the b. Okay, so notice you can write it as the b, the y-intercept, or you can write the point. A couple of ways to look at that. Y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. It's on the y-axis. Okay, to graph it, just like the song, find the x-intercept, let y equal 0, solve it for x. Find the y-intercept, let x equals 0, solve for y, go down to the graph and plot them, and you got it. Uh, some things here. I like to use the little table. 
I'm making y0, so that's giving me the x-intercept. I'm making x0, that would be the y-intercept. Also notice when we have this xy here, that's actually 0, 3. That's giving us points. So that's, those tables are just like your points. Okay, get rid of all this extra stuff. Okay, graphing these. Think about it, y equals negative 3. So they, they're they nice, they put their scales on here. Here's my y-axis, I come down to negative 3. So remember, it's not going to be the y-axis, it's got to be through the y-axis. Now, if you look at this, all these points on here, this is negative 2, negative 3. If you notice, the y is negative 3. This point is 4, negative 3. If you notice, the y is equal to negative 3. That's what that equation means. y is always equal to negative 3. They don't put an x in it because the x changes every time. The y stays the same. You get to graph number 2 on your own, but that's all you got to do on number 1. Don't be afraid to make those mistakes, kiddos. I'm going to start just checking those ones I don't graph a little closer and looking for points on those problems. Okay, on this one, notice we're just finding the x and y intercepts. We're not graphing them. So I'm going to do number four for you. I'm going to use my little table. There's my x, there's my y, 0, 0, because that kind of reminds me what to do. Plug in my numbers. Negative x minus 4 times 0 equals 16. Negative x minus 0 equals 16. Negative x equals 16. Divided by negative 1, x equals negative 16. So I've got that. My x-intercept is negative 16, 0. Again, if you need extra paper, kids, remember, use it, attach it. You can write up here. You can write in other places. Oh, I forgot to put answers on this one for us. Oh, well. Shoot, 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 shoot. Okay. Let's pause this for a second. And let's find my y-intercept now. So that's going to be negative 0 minus 4y. I should change my pen color. Whoops. Equals 16. That's 0 minus 4y equals 16. Negative 4y equals 16. I divide by negative 4. y equals negative 4. So... I'm going to write up here my x-intercept is negative 16. My y-intercept is negative 4. And I can see that answer over here. So that's looking good. Okay. No different work on the next two, really. You're just going to use it to graph. So I'm going to do the exact same work. I'm going to have my x and my y, 0 and 0. 2x plus y equals 4. I like to write my equations out. So that's 2x plus 0 equals 4. For 2x equals 4, I'm dividing by 2. x equals 2. I put that in there, so I go to 2 on the x-axis, or 2, 0. I plot that point. I do the same, so I got uh, I got x equals 0, so I have 2 times 0 plus y equals 4. That's 0 plus y equals 4, or y equals 4. Pretty simple. That goes right up there. I plot it. I should have written it in there. Now I just draw my line. That's not a very good line. It's not a very good line either. That's a better line because that's not a really good point.
Okay, one problem for me to show you here yet. We got our word problem. The band is selling sweatshirts and baseball caps. They re raised nine grand uh, to attend a band competition. Sweatshirts are 25, caps are 10. Uh, there's our equation, 25x plus 10y equals 9,000. Our x is the number of sweatshirts sold, y is the number of baseball caps. That happens to go with those prices for those corresponding ones, if you notice. Find the x and y intercepts. So I'm going to do half of this. You're going to have to do the other half. A graph like this, let's label it. So our x is our sweatshirts down here. So this is our sweatshirts. I should say number of sweatshirts sold. This is going to be our number of... caps sold over here. Don't know what my scales are going to be yet. So again, I start with my x, y, 0, 0. I'm going to do the x-intercept here first. So let's make y 0. So we got 25x plus 10y equals 9,000. So that's 25x plus 10 times 0. If you start to notice that's always going out, you can go straight to this 25x equals 9,000, do my division, get my calculator out. And I get 360. So that is my x-intercept. And that means 360 shirts, shirts or caps are sold. OK. Okay, so that's the number of sweatshirts sold, not the number of caps. Now we've got to put a scale on here. Now the scale is going to depend on this number. You're going to use a different scale on the Y. So I got 360. I want to go up to 400 here. I think I'm going to, I got 10 of these. I think I think I'm going to go by 40s. So that'd be 0, 40. That's going to be 80, 120, 160, 240. 320, and that would be 400. Okay, so that puts my 360 right there. And I got my x-intercept. You're going to have to find the y-intercept, the number of caps sold. You're going to use a different scale on it. Remember, you don't want your number coming out down here. You want it coming out in that upper part of the range. It should be fairly easy to get on there. I don't think that one's going to be real hard. This one, you're just going to plug it in. This is going to be your x. Solve it for y. Plot the point. That point should actually be on the line with the x and the y intercepts if you did it correctly. And uh, you can use the graph to find two more solutions. So, you know, when you get your graph in there, you can say, okay, this point is this many caps and this many sweatshirts. Or you can randomly pick a number. Oh, I'm going to pick 100 caps. That makes your X, whatever it happens to be, you know, that makes your, uh, you know, 100 for your Y. And you solve it for X. So you can pick 100 sweatshirts, solve it for Y. Either way, that's going to work. Get it done. Oh, God, these things always go longer than I wanted, but this one wasn't too bad.